Morning Trainiacs, after the world's longest security screening process, I am a little bit late for the flight. So we are headed to Lanzarote to film the How to Swim Masterclass with Lucy Charles and her husband Reese Barkley, also a professional triathlete. Got to hurry a lot, they're boarding right now, and we are going to answer all of your questions that you asked me on Instagram. Let's go. Well, that first flight um, just barely made it. They do not enjoy camera gear and bike gear, and when you're traveling with camera gear as well as bike gear, it does not go well. Let's get into some of these questions. For starters, have I ever conducted a survey to know where Trainiacs are located? It basically mimics the worldwide triathlon demographic. About 43 to 46% are in the US, and then big countries are UK, Germany, Australia, New Zealand. Basically, if there are lots of triathletes in an area, there are lots of Trainiacs located in an area. We do have an over average amount of Canadians and a lot of like Anglo-Saxon countries. I think because they look at me and they're like, hey, he looks like me. Plus I speak English, so it's a lot of English speaking countries. Basically, English speaking countries that have a lot of triathletes. When are you going to LA with Cam Worf? This is the Cam Worf How to Bike Masterclass. Cam Worf is the two-time defending Kona course record holder. I'm coming home from Lanzarote on the 15th of January, home for like three days, and then NTK and I go straight to LA. So, very soon. What nutrition would you use in a sprint race? Well, personally, because I would go somewhere around 106, 107 in a sprint race, I really don't take anything. I actually like dump out a huge amount of my water bottle. So I'll like fill up one water bottle, sip on it throughout the warm up of the race, and then make sure that when I start the race, I've basically got that much left for the bike. That's it. But it's more dependent on how long it's going to take for you to race. And for that, go to triathlonterran.com forward slash triathlon nutrition guide. That will dial in your specific triathlon nutrition. All right, I gotta go find a gym here. I've got like seven hours in Montreal. So, a little bit of a swimming around. Oh yeah, that was a hour 15 minute run. The last 15 minutes at sub 430 per kilometer pace. I forget what that is in miles and then uh, 44 minute, 1800 meter swim. I couldn't have planned that eight hour layover better if I tried. It's almost as if I did that on purpose. All right, a few more questions. What trip in 2019 are you most looking forward to? Right now, Half Ironman Puerto Rico, NTK and I are going. And I think after the race, we're gonna stick around for maybe a week and see the sights. We haven't been on a trip trip that I hadn't turned into a work trip in a long time. That'll be nice. What is my favorite vegetable? Well, first thing that came to mind was raw broccoli, but I know that's not it. After careful deliberation, I'll say sweet potato. It's delicious, it's nutritious. I've actually got in mind for this fictional endurance athlete specific supplement company that I'm concocting in my head. Sweet potato for the flavoring of the recovery drink. Thumbs up, thumbs down. Do I like bread? Unfortunately, I love it. Unfortunately, because my dad is celiac, I'm gluten free, I've been tested, I'm like slightly allergic to gluten, but I weigh like 15 pounds less when I avoid gluten, wheat, all that stuff, and I recover in a day from a really hard workout, whereas when I was on the gluten, I would be sore after a hard workout for like three, four days. So I love bread. I miss bread. My mom makes a really good gluten-free pumpernickel. And NTK and I were trying to find a gluten-free, like ancient fermented sourdough recipe. If you've got a gluten-free sourdough starter, comment below, please. Okay, I think I gotta get back. 
fly time soon. Oh, also, hi to, I think it was Jill and Lisa, the ladies that I saw at the pool. You guys were so nice. Thanks for having me. All right, gotta go now. Oh, I am appropriately fed and watered now. Next question, which bike do you have with you? I brought the Ventum, it being two and a half months out from Half Ironman Puerto Rico. I gotta start spending a lot of time in the aero bars and I have not been spending much. Any tips for getting stronger on the bike? All right, you need, I would say at least if you're, like if you're gonna commit to getting stronger on the bike, three rides a week. One, long, less intense, building to an over distance, longer than your race. Two, a really intense, shorter, typically during the week kind of ride. And then three, just another ride to get more time on the saddle. Time in the saddle, that's all there is to it. Best time on a 5K run. I have done a 5K road race, I'd say the course was a little off and I had a track athlete that I was pacing. I went, I think it was like 1859, course was funny though, but like an actual 5,000 meter, I think it was 1908. There, that's better light. Are you planning on adding marathon and ultra marathons to the training program? That is not in the cards at the moment. I have a hard enough time learning about how to coach triathlon and it took us eight months and many tens of thousands of dollars just to make a triathlon training program. It's not to say I won't look at it in the future, but not it's not in the cards at the moment. Are you a three-stroke breather or a four? Neither. Two-stroke breather. Think of it this way. More than electrolytes, more than fluid, more than gels or nutrition or calories or whatever it is. What is the number one fuel that our body has to function off of. Air. Air. So here we are, if we are in a race trying to perform really, really peak levels of exertion, breathing every three strokes, and most age group triathletes have a stroke rate of about 60 strokes a minute, and our normal breathing pattern is in between about 40 and 60 breaths a minute, but because we have a three stroke breath, we're only taking 20 breaths a minute. Meanwhile, we're trying to perform really high. Compare that to running, cycling, where we're taking anywhere between 40 and 80 breaths a minute. We need to get that closer to that. So just by breathing every second stroke as opposed to every third, we increase the amount of oxygen we supply our body with by 50%. Not bad, right? It's just math. Sometimes I use something on my nose when I'm training. Okay, okay, what is it and what are the functions? These are breathe right nasal strips or I'm trying an intake breathing bar. Basically, it's just nasal breathing. And the reason you wanna use nasal breathing is your muscles actually need more carbon dioxide in the body to be able to extract the oxygen from our red blood cells. So by breathing really heavy out of our mouth going it ends up extracting too much carbon dioxide and not stimulating the production of nitric oxide, which nasal breathing does. So nasal breathing kind of moderates how much carbon dioxide is left in your body while stimulating the production of nitric oxide. Also, the faster we breathe, <laughs> the more our blood vessels are constricted. So open up your blood vessels by nasal breathing. All right, did you think your life would be like this when you were young? No, didn't do triathlon. I thought I was gonna be a doctor, and then, I don't know, just lost interest in that. Thought I was gonna be a vet, and then I realized you had to put animals down. Wasn't cool with that. And then I thought I was gonna be a lawyer, and then it really came to my senses about that. But at some point, I would say late teens, I knew that I was going to own my own business at some point. I didn't think it would be YouTuber. And is Mel's husband super cool? Not really. Wears a hat really well though. Okay, let me settle in, relax a little bit before I gotta get on the plane. Yeah, this'll work for a six hour flight. 
One of the benefits of running an online business is you spend a lot on credit cards just about every purchase. So, points. Ever considered doing an ultra marathon? Yeah, I'd love to. Most of them are done on the trail. I love trail running, but I don't know if I'd hold up to it. I think I would actually be not too bad at it. Um, I enjoy trail running, and I think I'm fairly tough in the long distance stuff. Does high intensity, low volume work just as good? It works. If you are somebody that only has like four to five hours a week to train, probably, uh, maybe even less, like two to four hours, a lot of high intensity. But studies have shown that basically all the way down to about four hours a week is what they've tested. It could be less, but at even four hours a week, 80, 20. 80% 80 of your training at low intensity, zones one and two, 20% of your intensity at zones four and five is what works best. What bike box do you use for the Ventum? I use the Bike End Helium. Do I like it? I don't hate it. What time are you expecting to get in Roth? Really nothing. I'm expecting to have a learning experience. I want to be prepared enough that I can learn from the race as opposed to just get bossed around. What gets your heart rate up the most? Pretty much everyone is running because you have to carry your own body weight. All right, I think I'm gonna settle in. Oh, oh, oh. I got a solid two hours sleep there. I feel like I wanna say morning trainiacs because it's morning here in Brussels, but it's like middle of the night back in Winnipeg. I need some liquid sleep aka shower which leads me to the very last question of the day the whole plan over this week was i expected the travel to knock the stuffing out of me resulting in a lower heart rate variability reading today normally my average heart rate variability like 50 to 70 today 20 so not very good i expected that to happen so i did while my heart rate variability was higher throughout the week, I did my key sessions so that I can just get to Lanzarote, do a couple of recovery sessions over the next few days while I recover from the travel. Here, there's a heart rate variability video here and we will link to that at the end of the video. Last question, somewhat related to that. When you get a cold, do you completely stop to work out? If not, what kind of workouts do you do? Well, rule of thumb, if it's above the neck, a head cold, you can keep working out, but maybe just keep working out lighter. If it's a body cold, you want to take probably two, if not three days of complete rest. Like achy, chills, things like that, simmer down. And wrap your head around heart rate variability. It's a really good measure now that there are some practical ways to implement it. Like I said, check out that video, that by now I will link to here. My heart rate variability is quite low right now. So I'm gonna go take a shower and we're gonna call that a day. I'll see you in Lanzarote, Traniacs.